daily meditation on forearm Chen Rizik. And tonight we'll do it in the purification form. So this is a nice end of day routine to get into is some sort of purification. So just at the very beginning of the text. And um, uh, I mentioned this in class, but um, just to kind of, because I know not everybody was at class, the four opponent powers are how you purify. And to have the four opponent powers complete, we need to add one step. So three of the four are beautifully embedded in the practice itself. We don't even have to think about it. The third one is the power, or the fourth one is the power of resolve. So for karmic seeds, negative karmic seeds, to be unable to bear the fruit of suffering, we want to burn them metaphorically. The way you burn them is through generating refuge, the mind of regret, a remedy, and then a resolve, um, a counter habit, something to change the pattern. So we've got refuge in bodhicitta right off the bat in this text. And then later in the seven limb prayer, there's a very brief um, confess all negativities collected from beginningless life in samsara. So we'll pause there and generate the power of regret. The power of remedy is the mantra and the visualization itself. And then I'll lead you through the resolve part. So you can do purification with Chenrezig, you can do it with Vajrasattva, you can do it with all sorts of deities, um, but we'll just do the Chenrezig version tonight. So just take a minute and settle into your posture. Nice straight back. and become aware of your body. Scanning from the crown of your head down to the tip of your toes, just briefly allowing any tension to settle and release wherever you find it. Really let the mind come home to the body. Strong back, soft front. And then shift your focus to the breath. Just the breath. A stable focus that is spacious, but not spaced out. Relaxed, but not sliding into sleep.
focused and attentive without the stress we normally bring to focus. So just play with your powers of attention using the breath and see if you can get a good balance. and refuge in bodhicitta together, top of page three. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, as a supreme assembly by merit that I create from giving and other perfections. May I attain the state of a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the supreme assembly by merit that I create from giving and other perfections. May I attain the state of a Buddha to be of no order to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By merit that I create from giving and other perfections, may I attain the state of a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings not be separated from higher rebirth and the bliss of liberation. May all sentient beings abide in a state of equanimity, free from attachment and hatred, free from holding some close and others distant. To my root guru, the quintessence of all refuge objects, I go for refuge. Please bless my mind with your transforming powers. To my root guru, the quintessence of all refuge objects, I go for refuge. Please bless my mind with your transforming powers. To my root guru, the quintessence of all refuge objects, I go for refuge. Please bless my mind with your transforming powers. And so allow refuge to connect. <clears throat> that we're seeking refuge from our negative states of mind from our suffering, from our harmful behaviors. And so the real refuge is the Dharma that we have integrated. That's what's protecting us, is our own mental transformation. This is the medicine. The Buddha is like a doctor who assesses the situation and prescribes. The Sangha are like nurses, helping us with pacing and dosage, 
unexpected side effects. But the real refuge is the medicine of the Dharma. And together with refuge, we remember Bodhicitta, that we're working to become fully enlightened in order to be of greatest benefit to all sentient beings. More than haphazard occasional care, more than an educated guess, more than just samsara symptoms relief, but really working to transform our mind so that we can be of direct, specific, efficient benefit to all in an unmistaken way. And so think that the embodiment of the whole path in this context takes the shape of Chenrezig. On the crown of our heads, seated upon a white lotus and moon disc. He is white in color and has one face and four arms. The first two hands are joined together at his heart and hold a wish-fulfilling gem. His second right hand holds a crystal rosary, while his second left hand holds a white lotus. He is seated cross-legged in the Vajra posture, clothed in fine silk garments, and is adorned with precious ornaments. Made of transparent light, And whether the image appears clearly or not, try to connect to the presence of compassionate wisdom, the embodiment of your refuge, the representation of your path, brilliant white light above you, and however many details you can hold. The syllables om, ah, and whom at his three places, crown, throat, and heart center. White om, red ah, blue whom, representing enlightened body, speech, and mind. Add those to the visualization. They emit light that invites Guru Chenrezig from his natural abode. Guru Chenrezig dissolves into the Guru Chenrezig on my crown, who becomes the essence of the three refuges. And we'll do the prayer in seven limbs silently tonight as a meditation. So imagine that you prostrate with body, speech, and mind in faith. The Buddhas don't need our respect, will love us whether or not they see us respecting them. The respect is given because we become receptive to what we hold up. And so in becoming receptive to what we respect, we think of the qualities of the enlightened mind 
as showing us our full potential. So it's not as if we are low and they are high. It's that they're showing us the perfected form that we're already on the path to become. And we're open to the tools they offer for us to achieve the same state. And each and every offering I make, including those really performed and those mentally transformed. So we think of all the beautiful offerings set out in the Gamba, saffron water and flowers, incense and light, perfume, maybe the mental sound of music and everything beautiful we can imagine beautified in its most perfected form. And then multiplied. And the Buddhas don't need our offerings. They don't care if we make offerings. We're not trying to placate an angry God. We're making these offerings for the sake of increasing our merit creating the causes for resources in the future, working on letting go of our attachment, developing habits of generosity. And as in the case of prostration, what we make offerings to engages the mind of respect, which makes us receptive. We're saying, I value this path. And so allow all the beautiful things you can imagine to fill up all of the space in your mind's eye and imagine offering them to the Buddhas. Feasts of the best food. Fireworks and chandeliers, candles. Fields of flowers. clearest, cleanest water in beautiful vessels. Incense and perfume that smell the way you like them to smell. Imagine it and offer it. And then we confess all negativities collected from beginningless life in samsara. And so generate the mind of regret that thinks anything harmful I have ever done with my body, with my speech, with my mind. I will not hide from myself and I will not hide from the enlightened mind. And I'm not going to slip into habits of guilt and shame. Instead, I'm going to take an empowered response by just thinking regret, clean and clear, seeing a fault to be a fault in order to start correcting the habit and to purify the past. And so physically we think countless times we have disregarded life, any number of acts of killing, insects and animals, human beings, in this life or past lives, both.
There have been any number of ways we have taken what was not freely offered. We have stolen or taken the possessions of others for granted, borrowed things and not returned them. We're careless with the things belonging to the community or the family. In this and previous lives, no guilt, just regret. And we've engaged in countless acts of sexual misconduct, not respecting the relationships of others, not respecting our own relationships, objectifying the bodies of others, having unclear ideas about consent, any number of ways we've been unskillful with our body, killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. And so if we're going to purify, we need to acknowledge. Think anything remembered in this life and anything I can't remember, I lay it bare. These mistakes are not me, are not my fault, but I take full responsibility for them. And so think the power of resolve then related to body. What's one small practical way you can be more skillful with your physicality? Somehow more honoring of life, more honoring of the possessions of others or the bodies and relationships of others. Just make one small quiet plan to yourself. ways that you'll change the pattern. Maybe it's as simple as cleaning more carefully with awareness of insects. and shift to speech, thinking there's any number of ways I have lied or been divisive or harsh or senseless in my speech, I lay these bare, both remembered and not remembered. Not with guilt, just regret, acknowledgement. and think in the future, even if just for the rest of the night, what will I do to correct my speech? Even if it's just as simple as staying silent. One tiny plan achievable to change the habit pattern. And do the same with mind. Any mental habits of covetousness, of malice, of wrong views.
laying them there and making a small, simple plan to think in more healthy ways, even if just for the rest of the night. And then we continue the rest of the seven limb prayer aloud and the rest of the prayers, page five, starting with rejoicing. I rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, by living as our guide until samsara ends, reveal the teachings to all sentient beings. I dedicate my own virtues and those of others to the great enlightenment. By the virtue of having of offering to you the assembly of Buddhas visualized before me, this mandala built on a base resplendent with flowers, saffron water, and incense, and adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. May all beings share in its good effects. To Arya Chenreze, whose body is pure white unstained by defilements, whose head is adorned by the fully enlightened Buddha Amitabha. To you who gaze upon all sentient beings with eyes of boundless compassion, I prostrate. And the power of the remedy is this visualization. We visualize a stream of the five kinds of nectar, white, red, blue, yellow, and green, Par from the heart of Chenrezig, enter the crown of our heads. The nectar purifies all delusions, obscurations, and their latencies, and I receive all the blessings. So hold the visualization of five colored light flowing from Chenrezig's heart to your crown, down and through you, purifying. And we have the short mantra. Om Mani Padme Hum. 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 Om Continue the mantra under your breath, together with the visualization. And let yourself feel purified. 
Let go of those past mistakes. Connect with your Buddha nature. Chen Rezig above the crown of your head dissolves into light and absorbs into you, blessing your body, speech, and mind, helping you to stabilize your resolve. And we dedicate bottom of page six. May I quickly become Arya Chenrezig and lead all sentient beings to his enlightened realm. May the precious Bodhi mind not yet born arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. Remembering the emptiness of the agent, the action, the object. Not even a shred of independent existence all of it dependently arisen. Okay. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. Have a nice night.